What's up, cuz? First, I want to give a shout out to my Sam Gang niggas in D Town. Oh, man. So I'm rapping for you niggas today, man. Ready for you niggas today, man. Uh, we gonna go back to this motherfucking Freaky Friday shit. Now, I don't, I don't know none of this music that you hear in the background, so we gonna hear that. We gonna cut that shit short. Um, today we ain't talking about Freaky Friday. Today we talking about one of the worst rides. In Texas history in the penitentiary. Uh, Telfa unit. No, I'm tripping. Terra unit. Terra unit. Um, I can't think of the date, but it was a riot against the officers and the inmates. It was in August sometime in August. Because I was going through my shit. But anyway, uh, we had plotted this little old gimmick we were finna pull on these folks. So, uh, Cuz, Demont Jackson, from the D, Cuz was like, from the Avenue gang. The nigga was like, say, Cuz, uh, we finna whoop these laws. So it was a few more niggas, you know, it was a few more niggas into the main part of this shit. So, when it jump out, we fucking the count up to make the laws come out and wreck y'all. So these niggas done went in the inside and said they got to use a restroom, whatever little scam they put the folks on to get up in the building with them. Been the prettiest woman I ever seen in my life, man. I ain't going to even call her name. I ain't going to call her name. Come my nigga knocked the shit out of her when he started this bitch off. That nigga rad back like Nolan Ryan. And this a big old nigga, about 240. Rad back like Nolan Ryan, hit this girl in the eye. Boom! When he hit her, them other niggas rat packed a desk. You know, that's where they keep the paperwork and shit. They rat packed a desk. They had these hoes. So, we on the wreck yard. It's about 290 motherfuckers, 290 motherfuckers on the wreck yard. Oh, shit. We get at these folks. We flood them. We whoop out of everything on the wreck yard. Whoop everything. I'm told we whoop everything. This is the craziest shit ever. So the folks get us in inside. You know, the niggas wanted to surrender. They wanted to surrender. They get us on the inside. They take my niggas and put them in handcuffs and started to ride. Put them in handcuffs and fuck my niggas up. And a nigga stood right there helpless. Couldn't watch. I mean, couldn't help the niggas because they was on the other side of a motherfucking wonder in a sally port. So these hoes and jumped on these motherfucking niggas in handcuffs by nine deep. They put one of my partners in a coma. They put both of them niggas in a coma, but one came out early, the other one didn't. Uh, he came out later on. But say my nigga, that was the craziest shit because you gotta realize that probably was the first time in Texas prison history where inmates really attacked the officers. But nigga, when, they, when I seen how vicious a nigga was, you know what I realized? A nigga came in this bitch a simple thief and gonna leave out this bitch a motherfucking mass murderer cause they ain't put me around nothing but motherfuckers that's crazy. Man, I'm talking about at that time, at, at, at this time, it was a divide going on between prison gangs having wars and shit. So, you know, you got the Crips and the Blood, but we having reasonable shit. We going to get out in that cone and do some thumping. We ain't trying to kill each other because it ain't that serious. We just doing some recreational shit because that's what niggas do in the penitentiary. But anyway, these motherfucking folks... It's so hysterical about what took place. And the motherfucking warden was such a, a motherfucking warden that he told them motherfucking folks, y'all been jumping on these boys, y'all been doing all this shit to these boys. I ain't gonna keep these boys locked down. I'm gonna let them right back up. 
But he get come in the day room, every day room, and he make the same fucking speech. I never forget it. Say, you motherfuckers ain't gonna quit, keep on doing whatever the fuck you wanna do. And you ain't gonna keep on pissing on my boots and telling me it's raining. Say, I love the shit out that bed. Uh, but you know what this crazy part was? When I was on that unit, man, I was in that prison. That man tried to do everything in his power to get me to understand that, look, man, these folks is going to fuck you the first chance they get. And guess what you doing? You steady getting them opportunities, too, because you steady doing stupid shit. You know, he it was him and a major, and these dudes was like real, real down-to-earth black men because they understood the struggle. You know, them niggas is some niggas that just made it out the ghetto. Them niggas is niggas that just made it out the ghetto. So, you know, when they looked at us, they looked at us with pity. So a lot of times they tried to talk to us about stupid shit we did. I remember this man told me, he said, say, man, you're going to get some more time in prison or get locked in seg. Soon as I leave this motherfucker from being a warden, you better sit your ass down, nigga. It wasn't 45 or 50 days that man left as a warden and I was in, indicted for murder. Yeah. That was my partner, real, real man. But anyway, say, man, I used to be on that man. You and I do whatever the fuck I want to do, man. Say, I remember we used, to, we used to go from one side of the unit to the other side of the unit. God damn it, when they first built that motherfucker, wasn't no fences in that bitch. Terror unit, and this bitch was terrible. Nigga, we used to go over there on that motherfucking uh, A side, about four, five thieves deep. We have all them hoe ass, and we got a law man gonna take us over there. We got all them, Mr. Springfield gonna take us over there. We got all them folks, shit, we done robbed them niggas blind. We done robbed them niggas blind and walked back across the unit with, 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 with five, six, seven thousand dollars with the goddamn shit. Up to with a, with a buggy with the law man. Hey, who is them? Oh, they my SSIs. We ain't SSI a motherfucking thing. But say, man, we used to have fun on that motherfucker. We used to have so much fun. I ain't gonna lie, I forgot I was in prison. That's why I caught the bitch ass murder case. I forgot I was in prison. I thought I was still in the street. Cause we were still gang banging heavy at that time. I'm gonna tell you crazy. I really wanted to tell y'all this interview with, with my little cousin finna come interview me. But, nigga, these Grape Street niggas hemmed me up because a homie from my hood got ratted on from another homie in our hood. But the homie in our hood just had to have my same name. So these niggas done jammed me up, goddamn me in this corner. They finna gun me down. Nigga, like, 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 like. <laughs> like a classic goddamn Clint Eastwood movie. They finna gun me down in this corner. So I tell them niggas, hold up, cuz. Y'all gotta at least give me a first shake. If you niggas say, you feel like I'm a rat. I feel like I ain't a rat. I know for a fact I ain't a rat. You niggas saying I'm ratting on a nigga. I'm saying I'm gonna write this nigga. This nigga big homie from my hood. This nigga was, this nigga was one of my loved ones. I know for a fact, nigga. He not gonna say Lil Mac, I'm ratted on him. So guess what? The niggas say, okay, we gonna give you seven days to get a letter there and back. So I write cuz and I tell him the urgency on this, you gotta send this kite back cause he nigga finna kill me cuz behind you and they misunderstanding what the fuck going on. So the big homie just wrote back and let a nigga know, nah, this ain't him, but he also when he when he wrote me back, he told them niggas, nigga, y'all better sit y'all motherfucking head down, nigga. That's a real OG, nigga. And I ain't gonna lie, since that motherfucking time right there, I made a nigga respect me as this, that. A real OG. The last of a dying breed. Shit that niggas don't even understand. Cause niggas will split their fucking tongue and tell a tell them put people in the thing. Just because they don't want to go to jail. I don't want to go to jail either. I don't do nothing to go to jail. But guess what I ain't going to do? I ain't going to tell nobody to keep me out of jail if I did something to go to jail. Yeah. Come a real nigga. And real niggas is the last of a dying breed. Because all the other niggas, I don't know what they is. They, 
you know, real bullshit niggas. But God bless them, all the same. But I said that to say this right. At the end of the day, I just want a nigga to know that, hey, man, prison ain't a place where I want to see a nigga. I wouldn't work, wish that on my worst enemy. So when I do these motherfucking videos, I do them to ask a nigga, hey, man, think about what you do because them white folk got to sell for you and a number for you. And they got a whole bunch of motherfucking TDCID cards for you if you want to put your name on one. So I hope you don't. Play up.